champion of the world, James Lights Out. So you think you're the season pro? I'm the season pro. I know how to I'm a complete fighter. And do you I'm think he's the best? best? No, I'm the best. I'm a little better, but you know what? Time will tell. I'm ready for anybody. I'm coming. I'm the man in the heavyweight division. If y'all want to get the belt, y'all come see me. I be James, up. congratulations. Yeah. Nobody taught me how to fight. I was born a fighter. Everybody else was taught. That's the difference. When a man finds the talent he was born with, put it into action, we witness greatness. When you think of the brightest pugilistic talents to step into the boxing ring without a doubt, James Tony comes to mind. A man with rage in his heart and unwavering confidence in his love for violence, James Tony represented a unique blend of an old school boxer and a new era brash boxing star. Few men have made a legacy like him in the ring. Spanning three decades and five weight classes than the defensive genius James Tony. Sit back and let us take you through the rise and struggles of James Tony. You could have guessed the natural inclinations of Tony from a very young age. The product of a broken home. As has been the case in many successful fighters, Tony grew up in violence. His father regularly beat his mother before leaving for good when his son was only 19 months old. Nicknamed Lights Out as a teenager, James played American football where his talent shined. But an ankle injury, a violent altercation with his teammates, and the advice of his mother to pursue fighting drove him to focus solely on boxing. Descriptions of Lights Out very often include the term old school. His mentality was undoubtedly that. He would fight anybody, anywhere, anytime. He always enjoyed the toughest challenge, unlike many boxers today who include a lot more politics in their matchups. Especially early in his career, Tony fought at an unparalleled frequency, much more akin to his old time idols, Ezard Charles and Archie Moore, and always against the toughest opponent he can get. Tony's violent nature and rage spilled well outside the ring. He often had outbursts of insults and sometimes physical attacks in press conferences and weigh-ins against his opponents. But this also gained him notoriety in the media in the 90s. His outspoken persona was the stark contrast to the well-educated boxing style he had. Tony was a complete master of the Philly shell and counterpunching, which he had an incredible inclination for. He attributes his finer skills in the craft mainly to the training of Bill Miller, whose teachings were very 1940s-like. He only knew one way to prepare for fights, and that is through fighting. Tony would spar hundreds of rounds in preparation for a fight and had an obvious disdain for everything else like road work or cardio. His sparring sessions in Kronk Gym became infamous through the internet with their intensity. We inevitably begin with the fight that made James a star. Just in his third year as a pro, and already with 26 fights under his belt, he was matched with IBF and lineal middleweight champ Michael Nunn, who was also ranked number three in the P4P ranking. We can't leave out the problematic weight cut for Tony, which became a constant struggle through his entire career that would send him all the way up to heavyweight. Entering the fight as a 20 to 1 underdog, Tony was supposed to be the homecoming title defense for Nunn, and the first couple of rounds looked exactly that. After five rounds, Tony had begun to take over the fight, and his intelligent slipping and punches to the body started to take effect. The dramatic upset came in the 11th round. Still losing on the cards, Tony launched a perfectly placed left hook that floored none and won him his first middleweight title. Michael, we got a new IBF middleweight champion of the world. We got a new IBF middleweight champion of the world. James lights up Tony. Unbelievable. Tony kept his busy pace and fought three more times against the steepest competition in 1991, making it his poster year, where he won the Ring Magazine Fighter of the Year award. 
His clash with Mike McCallum was an instant classic and can be watched over and over again. The two men fought to a draw the first time, but Tony put a stamp on their rivalry with a clear decision in the rematch just a year later. After defending his title six times, James Tony's problem with weight was becoming too much, so he made a move to the super middleweight to challenge Iran Barkley for the title. This was to become one of Tony's finest performances, displaying a stunning compilation of speed, precision, and power. Lights Out disfigured Barkley's face, landing an astounding 400 shots within nine rounds. ESPN commentator Barry Tompkins described the performance by James Tony as, as close to perfection as you can be in a boxing match. We can't discuss Tony's career without talking about his fight with Roy Jones Jr. The marquee unification clash happened on November 18, 1994. As it became a Tony tradition, he had serious problems with his weight and had to shed an astonishing 44 pounds in six weeks and 18 pounds just in fight week. The rapid weight loss was sure to leave a deep trace in the fight. Tony was sluggish and didn't manage to get going at all. Jones's unconventional style and dazzling speed won him the fight in a dominating fashion, while also producing a highlight for the ages with a three-round knockdown that, although debatable, still looks amazing on film. Tony insisted on doing things his way, and he lives how he wants, which meant he would eat, not run at all, and only spar. The next few years saw him firing his longtime trainer and manager, then going on a two-year self-imposed break from 97 till 99. After the break and under the training of Freddie Roach, he finally seemed to have refound the right path this time at cruiserweight. After posting a 10-fight win streak, he got a crack at then-undefeated champion Vasily Zhirov in April of 2003. Tony's defensive and counter-punching genius shined through the entire fight. The pair produced an exciting fight with a mesmerizing pace, but it was the shoulder roll and short uppercuts of James that would finally drop the Kazakhstani warrior in the last seconds of the 12th round. As dramatic as it gets, Zhirov made the bell, but the fight and the cruiserweight title were awarded to Tony. James's final great fight was his first at heavyweight. He faced an all-time great in Evander Holyfield. Although past his prime, Holyfield was still a top contender and his legendary toughness made him very dangerous even at 40. Even at heavyweight, Tony demonstrated great hand speed and impeccable defense, which were way too much for the veteran. Holyfield's corner decided to save the man from himself and threw in the towel in the ninth round. This is how Tony won his second Ring Magazine Fighter of the Year award 10 years after the first one. What's right here, Evander? Tell us what's going through your mind here. He don't hit hard enough to... Uh... James lights out Tony, always did things his way learning the finer points of boxing while enjoying the finer things in life. In his career of 29 years, 92 professional fights, and thousands of sparring rounds, Tony was never knocked out. A legendary career that would have been even greater only if he had a little more discipline. James Tony is a shining example of a man born to fight.